A massive freight train climbs a mountainside, but at the front the locomotive looks barely half the size of what you'd expect. This is the story behind the smallest locomotive that pulled the heaviest trains. Machines costing a fraction to build, outfitted with radical gears, somehow able to haul a thousand tons up 14% grades where giants failed. How did an unlikely invention outmuscle the industry standard? And what did it cost those who depended on it? The mountains of West Virginia, Oregon, and California posed a problem that no ordinary locomotive could solve. Logging and mining companies needed to move thousands of tons of timber and ore from steep, remote hillsides to distant mills. The terrain was unforgiving. Tracks snaked through dense forest, clung to muddy slopes, and twisted around hairpin bends so sharp they measured just 20 degrees. Standard locomotives, built for broad sweeping curves and gentle grades, simply could not make the turn. Their long, rigid wheelbases locked them out of the mountains, and their heavy frames threatened to shatter hastily laid rails with every pass. The cost of building a railroad into these wild places was staggering. Standard gauge track, with its wide rails and careful grading, demanded $15,000 to $25,000 for every mile. For companies chasing fast profits in the woods, that price was impossible. Instead, they turned to narrow gauge. Three-foot rails, thrown down for a fraction of the cost, sometimes just $3,000 to $5,000 a mile. These tracks wound through the landscape with little regard for permanence, often laid directly on logs, mud, or even bare ground. Bridges were little more than timber trestles, thrown across ravines as needed, and abandoned when the logging moved on. But cheap track brought its own dangers. Grades soared to 10, 12, even 14 percent. Slopes so steep that a standard locomotive would spin its wheels helplessly or slide backwards. Curves doubled back on themselves in spaces barely wider than a two-lane road. The financial pressure was relentless. Every mile had to be built as cheaply as possible. Every load had to reach market, no matter how brutal the path. This was the crucible that demanded a new kind of locomotive, one that could bend with the track, grip the rails, and pull heavy trains where no other engine dared to go. Ephraim Shea was not a formally trained engineer, but a Michigan timberman determined to solve a problem that stumped the railroad giants. His answer, patented in 1881, looked nothing like the sleek locomotives of the main line. Instead, Shea's machine bristled with vertical cylinders bolted to one side of the boiler, spinning a crankshaft that ran the length of the locomotive. This crankshaft, through a system of exposed gears and universal joints, powered every axle on every truck beneath the engine. The boiler itself sat offset to the left, counterbalancing the weight of the machinery and giving the Shea its distinctive lopsided look. The genius of the design was in the gearing. By reducing engine revolutions through a 3 to 1 or even 4 to 1 gear ratio, Shea's locomotive traded speed for unstoppable torque. On paper, the Shea could crawl at just 6 miles per hour, but every wheel dug in, gripping rails that would have sent a conventional engine spinning helplessly. And because the drive system flexed with the trucks, the locomotive could twist and snake around curves that would have derailed any rigid framed engine. Shea's invention did not stand alone for long. Rival builders responded with their own geared solutions. The Climax locomotive used twin cylinders mounted at an angle, driving a central shaft beneath the boiler. Bevel gears at each truck split the power, creating a simpler, if sometimes rougher, ride. The Heisler, patented a decade later, featured a V-twin cylinder arrangement under the boiler, driving a central gear shaft. This layout gave the Heisler a smoother motion and better visibility for its crew, with fewer exposed moving parts. Each design approached the same problem with a unique mechanical language. Whether it was the Shea's vertical cylinders and offset boiler, the Climax's angled drive, or the Heisler's V-twin, all shared one principle gear reduction for maximum pulling power at low speed. These innovations redefined what a locomotive could be, making it possible to haul heavy trains up grades and around curves that once seemed impossible. On paper, the geared locomotives seemed unlikely champions. 
half the size of mainline engines, crawling along at a pace barely faster than a brisk walk. Yet their real-world achievements silenced any doubts. In the logging camps of West Virginia and the forests of Oregon, a 50-ton shea routinely hauled trains weighing 200 tons upgrades as steep as 10%, a slope that would leave a standard locomotive spinning its wheels or sliding backward. On level ground, the same engine could move up to 1,000 tons of timber, matching or surpassing the output of engines twice its weight. The numbers were staggering for the era. Cass Scenic Railroad's Shea No. 5, built in 1905, still climbs an 11% grade today, pulling passenger cars and, in its prime, heavy log trains, loads that would have been unthinkable for any conventional engine of similar size. Technical records from Lima Locomotive Works show that gear reduction ratios of 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 turned modest steam pressure into relentless torque, allowing these machines to inch up mountainsides at 4 to 6 miles per hour, with a full train in tow. Photographs from the early 20th century capture these small locomotives straining up muddy switchbacks, black smoke pouring from offset stacks, endless strings of log cars stretching behind. The paradox was clear. The smallest locomotives, running on the cheapest, roughest track, were moving the heaviest loads. For the men who staked their livelihoods on every run, the proof was in every successful climb, every load delivered to the mill, and every day the rails held under the impossible weight. The men who ran these geared locomotives knew the risks from the moment they stepped into the cab. Every shift began with the howl of steam and the grinding roar of exposed gears, an unending racket that shook the bones and left ears ringing for hours. Operators learned quickly that the very design that gave these engines their power also made them unpredictable. Grease and oil dripped from spinning shafts, and the constant vibration meant something was always coming loose. Roadside repairs became part of the daily routine. A broken gear tooth could bring a train to a halt miles from camp, forcing crews to crawl under the engine with wrenches and hammers, racing against the clock as the forest closed in and the mountain air grew cold. The dangers went far beyond inconvenience. When a gear failed under load, the consequences could be deadly. Engineers told of moments when the drive shaft seized without warning, or a gear shattered with a crack like a rifle shot. On steep grades, a lost gear meant a runaway. Tons of logs and steel thundering backwards down the mountain, with nothing but the handbrake and luck to save the crew. In 1910, a Shea working the Elk River line suffered a catastrophic gearbox failure. The explosion hurled metal across the cab, killing the engineer instantly and sending the locomotive and its train plunging off the embankment. The story spread quickly among logging camps, a grim reminder that even the smallest engine could become a death trap in an instant. For the men in the cab, the job was a test of nerve as much as skill. Deafened by the machinery, battered by the lurching motion, and always aware that a single missed inspection could mean disaster. They kept the trains moving, because if they didn't, someone else would. The human cost was high, but the work went on, day after day, up and down the mountains, as long as there were trees to haul and tracks to run. By the middle of the 20th century, the world these locomotives conquered had changed. Diesel engines, with their quiet reliability and far longer range, swept through logging camps and mountain railroads. They could haul more, burn less fuel, and required only a fraction of the maintenance. The days of the geared steam locomotives seemed numbered. One by one, the old engines were parked, stripped for parts, or simply left to rust at the end of abandoned tracks. The forest reclaimed many. Others ended up in scrapyards, their intricate gears and offset boilers reduced to piles of metal, their stories nearly lost. Yet a handful survived, sometimes by luck, sometimes because a crew or a community refused to let them go. Fewer than 200 geared steam locomotives remain today, scattered across museums, parks, and heritage railroads. Of those, perhaps 30 or 40 are still operational, kept alive by a small army of restorers and volunteers. 
Places like the Cass Scenic Railroad in West Virginia have become sanctuaries for these machines. There, Shea No. 5, built in 1905, still climbs the same mountain grades it conquered over a century ago. Its gears clattering and steam billowing as tourists ride in the shadow of its legacy. Keeping these engines running is a craft passed down through generations. Modern restorers work with blueprints drawn in the 19th century, machining new parts by hand, scouring the country for rare castings, and inventing solutions for problems their predecessors never imagined. Each overhaul is a puzzle, each run a celebration of survival. The sight of a geared locomotive in motion, alive with steam and motion, gears exposed and working, reminds us that engineering genius is not always about size or speed, but about purpose and perseverance. These survivors offer a living lesson. Sometimes the machines that seem least likely to endure leave the deepest mark. Today, fewer than 200 geared steam locomotives survive worldwide, with only 30 to 40 still operational. Clear evidence of how few remain from the thousands once built. This documentary has shown how small locomotives like the Shea, Climax, and Heisler achieved the impossible, hauling massive loads up grades as steep as 14% and navigating 20-degree curves that would defeat conventional engines. Their power came not from size, but from ingenious design. Gear reductions of 3 to 1 or 4 to 1, flexible truck-mounted drives, and affordable narrow-gauge tracks. Yet the full scope of their most extreme feats and such as confirmed 1,000-ton hauls on steep grades remains partly undocumented due to the scarcity of primary records. What is known is that these machines transformed industries and made remote logging and mining possible. Their legacy endures at sites like Cass Scenic Railroad, where visitors witness their unique capabilities firsthand. The smallest locomotives succeeded by redefining what power meant for their time, proving that the right engineering solution can overcome even the harshest obstacles.